after 2010. I call the Honourable the Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And it is my solemn duty to pass on the respects of the people of the Riverina uh, for the death of the Honourable Edward Gough Whitlam ACQC and also to uh, uh, have a few uh, reminiscences of uh, Mr Whitlam's time in Wagga Wagga and as well to pass on a few of the remarks of those who knew him and those who revered him. And, uh, in passing on uh, some of the uh, reminiscences of uh, Mr Whitlam, I bring to the House a uh, bound edition of the Daily Advertiser, the Wagga Wagga newspaper. And the front page, and I know you're not allowed to use props, but I'm sure it's okay on this occasion, so I show my ALP friends across the other side, is the front page of the edition which uh, is headlined, Wagga's Big Welcome to Whitlam, Five Hour Visit. Uh, and uh, the story reads, the Prime Minister, Mr Whitlam, and his wife, Margaret, were Wagga's guests yesterday, and for five solid hours, wherever they went, crowds applauded, and wherever they, whenever, they, wherever they, whenever they turned, welcome hands were extended. More than 480 people, many of them young children, crammed into the Wagga Civic Theatre to extend a Wagga welcome to the man who holds Australia's top political office. Mr Whitlam visited Wagga to open the Schnell Harmon grandstand on Eric Wise Lobel, unfortunately now disused, uh, and the half-million dollar extensions to the Wagga Leagues Club. 300 sporting, civic and service leaders from Wagga and District attended the opening of the grandstand yesterday afternoon. Now, inside the Leagues Club later in the evening, Mr Whitlam and his wife met more than 150 Labor Party supporters in a relaxed and informal atmosphere. And I'm sure the uh, local Labor branch would love to get 150 local supporters at a function these days. Uh, a spokesman for Mr Whitlam said the Prime Minister didn't know what to expect coming to a current Liberal stronghold. And I'm happy to report, Speaker, that uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's now a strong national stronghold. But uh, anyway, but he was greeted with a right royal reception. Children, nuns, students, politicians, housewives and hundreds of working men thronged around Mr and Mrs Whitlam for their entire Wagga visit, which was Mr Whitlam's third to the city, but first as Prime Minister. And I can report it was the first Prime Ministerial visit that Wagga Wagga had received since Robert Menzies uh, came to town on Friday, November 17, 1961. So uh, it had been quite a while. During his welcome to the Prime Minister, Alderman Gissing spoke of the tremendous number of playing fields provided for the community of Wagga and the role of the council and the local leagues club in maintaining these. Mr Whitlam understood the need for uh, Commonwealth to fund directly local government. He understood regionalism. I have to say that. I have to put that on the record. Mr, said he was, Mr. Whitlam said he was flattered by the welcome he received from the people of Wagga. And you'll love this, uh, this quote, members opposite. And, I was, and you can just imagine Goff sort of, I'll channel Goff here. And I was thrilled to see all the decorations as I drove along Wagga's main street, he quipped. But I was later told they were for Christmas, not me. <laughs> and, you, and you can just see him, you can just see him saying it. You know that, uh, you know that, uh, those great quotes. He was, he was uh, quite the comedian, but uh, but very, very witty, as we all know. And I also would like to place on Hansard some of the tributes that uh, that he has received uh, from none the less than the former Nationals leader and Deputy Prime Minister Tim Fisher, who said. Uh, Unbelievably, Gough Whitlam as Prime Minister and ex-Prime Minister could recite correctly every train station from Juneau to Narandra in correct order, and he often did this when we were in conversation. Gough told me he used the wheat silo as the river in it to assist his RAF navigation training in World War II. My final session with him was on the Garn to Darwin in 2004, and once again he recalled in correct order Mara, Coolaman, Ganmain, Matong, Grong Grong and so forth. I mean, that's amazing. That, that is just a remarkable recall. Mr Fisher said he did not agree with much of Mr Whitlam's politics, but respected uh, Mr Whitlam's deep knowledge of the Riverina and also of military history, including the life and work of Sir John Monash, who, of course, uh, Tim Fisher is so uh, deeply fond of. Uh, I'd also like to quote some of the Labor members of the Riverina, um, one of whom uh, my great mate Peter Knox. Peter agrees with uh, nothing I ever say, nothing I ever do, but he's a great Labor member and I'll tell you what, if ever the Labor Party wanted to acknowledge somebody uh, with life membership or something of the party, Peter Knox is that person. But he said, Gough Whitlam was the reason I joined the Labor Party in 1972. Mr Knox said he met Whitlam, uh, Mr Whitlam on several occasions and was in awe of him. Uh, it, and he, when he heard the news, he said it was a very big shock, even at, at his age. And it was a very big shock, the fact that uh, when uh, Mr Whitlam passed away on 21 October 2014 at the grand old age of 98. I think we all—he was one of those ageless figures who we all thought would just live on forever. None of us really probably expected him to go. Um, when Gough Whitlam visited Wagga Wagga in 
uh, on, on January 15, 1974. Former Wagga, Wagga Deputy Mayor Mary Kidson recalls being struck by a very tall and articulate man who made a captivating speech. And he was one of those people who could really command an audience. He was one of those people who, not that I ever met him, but uh, certainly seeing documentaries on television and reading a lot about him, one of those people who, who had presence. Um, and, uh, and, and Mary Kidson uh, told how fond she was of him and certainly of her great memories of him. Um, John Sullivan, who was the a country party member for Riverina from 1974 to 1977, and who, even though he's an octogenarian, is still uh, contributing greatly to public life as a councillor for, uh, for Narendra Shire, uh, recalled uh, he was at, in parliament at the time, of course, when Mr Whitlam was. He said, we've lost one of the great characters of the Australian parliament and a prime minister that will be remembered for a long, long time. Uh, we had a great rapport and I thought very highly of him. And I think that probably stretches across the bounds of, uh, of Parliament, the fact that that great respect that people, and we heard it last week in the condolence motions by the Prime Minister and others on this side uh, for Mr Whitlam. Uh, I didn't appreciate some of the actions as leader of the Labor Party, but as a man, he was very good, Mr Sullivan said. Uh, others, uh, Glenn Elliott Rudder, who I bumped into at the uh, shopping centre yesterday, uh, described uh, Mr Whitlam as a man of vision with a positive outlook. Indeed, he, he, he certainly was. Dan Hayes, the uh, uh, young president of uh, Country Labor's Wagga Wagga branch, uh, marked, uh, said that the death of Mr Whitlam marked a sad day for the party. It was, it was a sad day for the ALP, but it was also a day when we could celebrate the life of uh, Mr Whitlam and certainly uh, the, the great, uh, the great the difference, the great transformation that he made to this nation. I do praise uh, Mr Whitlam for, for many of the things that he did, not least of which, of course, was also the, fund, the, the acknowledgement that Catholic schools require funding from, from Commonwealth, and not least of which he actually, I believe, understood regionalism, un understood the, the great belief in decentralisation. And I think uh, certainly if, uh, if more members of parliament uh, understood that great need for decentralisation, the regional areas would be far stronger than what they are now. Uh, he also uh, um, understood the need to have a, a trade relationship with China, and uh, we heard last week how he forged the way uh, for that great relationship to occur. And uh, Australia's current ties with China had their origins in, in his efforts at what I must say would, would have been a very difficult time. And uh, these moves laid the foundations for Australian business to establish a presence. And one of the businesses that is really enjoying the, uh, those links now is, is a company called BD Bags, based in Wagga Wagga. And, and, it's, and it's one of the fastest growing regional companies doing that sort of thing uh, in Australia. China is going to be the economic powerhouse of the world in the future, BD Bags founder Bruce Dicker said, and he acknowledged the role that uh, Mr Whitlam had played in that. So, uh, so there are a lot of people in the Riverina, uh, in fact I would say most people in the Riverina speaker, who, uh, who mourn uh, Mr Whitlam's passing, as do I. And, uh, and I really feel the need to pass on uh, the condolences of all people of the Riverina uh, to his loss and to pay respects uh, to his, the surviving members of his family. May he rest in peace and thank you for the contribution, Mr Whitlam.